Hey guys, I'm Brad from Brad Builds, and in my last episode, I finished gutting the interior and clearing out all the junk that had been festering for who knows how many years. In this episode, I'm going to be clearing out the engine bay, including the engine and transmission. Now, I've never done this by myself, I've done it with other people, so this will be a first for me. I finally, over here, got a engine hoist, a engine stand, and we're gonna take that big boy out. Now I'm gonna jack the car up and drain whatever fluid is in there. So I ended up putting two more jack stands on the front just because I saw the front kind of sagging. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. That oil is just the sludgiest. But there's oil in it, so it's a good sign. Now I'm gonna take that front bumper piece off so I can get closer to the engine. I can see on the other side right here that the bolt is not turning when I'm turning, which means it's gonna snap. I'm gonna try heating it up. I'd rather not bust that bolt. All right, so I got those pieces off. And when I was taking them off, I noticed that this front support is totally bent up right there. You can see it's split in this circle. On this side, it didn't split, but it's bent up enough where it split the metal there. And then this sort of front bumper fairing piece is all super dented. I threw some X's on it just so when I see them later on, I know they need replacing. I mean. Everything else looks fine. The frame is obviously straight, and these pieces are straight, which is good because those look like they go far back and I don't wanna to have to replace that. I'm gonna quickly pull these last few pieces off so they're out of my way, and then we'll start working with all that good stuff. So now I'm gonna drain the radiator. I actually don't think there's anything in there because, well, the cap's open. And if you see down here, the radiator hoses, I mean, they're totally open, ripped apart. So whatever, cool. I mean, there might be coolant starting like here, but at least half the radiator is empty. So we'll see if anything comes out. Looks like one of the fan blades ripped off at some point. This is most likely a vacuum hose of some sort, but just look how brittle it is. This is what a 50 year old hose looks like. Those are just supposed to be super flexible. So something I want to talk about before I move on 
is organizing parts. It's really important with builds like this to keep your screws and bolts and washers, I mean everything, just organized in a way that you can find it later because there's so many of them. I picked these up from the dollar store. They each hold 18 different slots and this is just from the interior. This is from the interior and then this is from today. So it fills up really fast. I have one more, but I'll probably have to pick up more before the build is over just because, I mean, you can see how many just different bolts I'm gonna have to be pulling in and out of here. And as well as that, then there's the suspension front and rear. There's tons of bolts and it's really easy to get lost. I'm not necessarily gonna reuse all of the bolts here, but finding the replacement bolts without the bolts to begin with is gonna be really difficult. So keeping organized is really helpful during builds like this. All right, so now I'm gonna get the carburetors out. Here's the air filter after, I don't know how many years, but a long time, enough that it disintegrated. So now I'm, I'm actually I'm gonna take out the fuel. I think this is the fuel rail first. Not like a fuel rail, but a fuel line. Um, just cause it's kind of in the way. Okay, back to the carburetor and intake manifold. Right now I'm trying to break the intake free from the head, but it's really stuck. So I'm gonna work on it with a crowbar. Okay, never mind. It actually seems as if there are some bolts, not not those ones, but they're kind of hidden under there. So I'm gonna take those out before breaking it with a crowbar. That piece cut my finger. That's why I just destroyed it. So it looks like it's coming out nicely now that all the bolts are out. The line that's stuck right now that I forgot to take off is these, which when yanking on it, it was the choke. But yeah, I'm gonna take this off. You guys would not believe the amount of spiders in here. They're just everywhere. I keep putting my hand under there and wrenching, then I'll pull my hand out and there's a spider on it. For those of you who know me, will know that I'm not a big fan of spiders. Okay, now we should be good to take that manifold out and the carburetors. The intake manifold and the carburetors are out. Bolts don't look too bad. These exhaust manifold bolts look like they're gonna be a pain to get out if they'll even come out. I feel like all of those are gonna have to get redone. 
and getting that out is gonna be a pain too. So far though, a lot of these bolts have been really easy to get out. I'm kind of surprised. I am from the East Coast originally, New York, and I've worked on tons of bigger trucks. I used to work at like a truck shop and these bolts would be so gone, you'd have to use a torch on them and just melt them. So I'm really surprised how easy so many of these bolts have been coming out. So I'm gonna start by dumping the oil and then moving to draining the transmission. Okay, so I was gonna drain the transmission, but when I rolled under there, there's actually not a drain plug. So I'm gonna leave that for later. We're gonna move on to disconnecting the coil and the spark plug wires and all these guys here. So now I'm gonna remove this. I'm actually not 100% sure what that is. It was connected to the fuel lines, so I think it might be a fuel pump. Whoops. I guess I didn't pull the bolt out the back and it snapped by pulling it with my hand. Well, it's good to know because it definitely needs to be replaced. Also listen to that bearing. So now I'm gonna remove the coolant lines. I think I need to use a breaker bar on this one. This is not coming out. Okay, so now we're gonna try to get the exhaust manifold off without breaking any of the bolts. So this is my awful jimmy rig holding chain. I actually need to cut the chain in half so that I have two parts to use for the engine hoist. And I forgot to pick up a vise at the hardware store. I'm gonna get rid of the thermostat housing because it's kind of in my way.
All right, so now I'm gonna put some tension on the engine and then get the engine mounts off. right now. Now there's one bolt on the transmission mount right here, which I'm gonna quickly get off. <clears throat> and we're gonna get this speed tracker off. All right, so the engine is out. I made a little bit of a mess. I caught most of the transmission oil, but little bits popped out in the front. And actually when I dropped the transmission mount and the engine and transmission like kind of jumped that way, the transmission pushed the oil pan out of the way and all the transmission fluid just like flew all over the ground. Now I'm gonna get the engine on the engine stand, but I just realized that I don't have the correct bolts to mount it to the engine stand. So I'm gonna come back in a day or so when I have those. Okay, so fast forward a few days and we got the bolts, we got the dog. We're going to take the rest of these lines off and then we're gonna unbolt the transmission from the engine, jack the engine up, and put the engine on the engine stand. So let's do that. The real shop dog we got here. All right, so the problem I'm having right now is that the transmission does not want to separate from the engine. There's probably some corrosion here and it's probably been connected for at least, you know, 10, 20 years. So I'm gonna try to use a, a block of wood and kind of push that way. I don't want to use any metal hammers or mallets. These would probably break the housing and I don't want to break it. So we can give that a shot. Oh, 
um, a flywheel plate. So under here, I actually couldn't see just because of how dirty it is, but there's actually a flywheel cover. I mean, there's always a flywheel cover. I just didn't notice it because everything is the same color of dirt. So I'm gonna get that plate off and then it should come off. What's up, girl? Deflected. We have to get the flywheel and the torque converter off because where you bolt the engine to the engine stand is right here. I'm gonna use these bolts. This, this one, this one, this one, and that one. And to do that, you have to take those off. I always forget whether it's counterclockwise or clockwise. Clockwise. Oh, it doesn't matter. Hey, the engine cranks. I mean, the engine turns. I just realized that as I'm turning that. I'm like, oh crap. The engine's moving. <laughs> Which means it's not seized. So now that the torque converter's off, we can take the flywheel bolts out. All right, so now that the flywheel's off, oh my gosh, I always hate how hard those bolts are to get off. And the worst is that the crankshaft is turning while you're doing it. And I mean, there's ways of stopping the crankshaft from moving by kind of like mounting something, but I didn't really have anything, so I just winged it with a mallet and a ratchet. For those of you saying, oh my gosh, you're gonna break your ratchet, I buy tools with lifetime warranty so that when I break them, I get free replacements. <laughs> um, okay, let's mount the engine up. So I'm gonna leave clearing the rest of this out for later. This video is long enough. Thanks for watching. You guys can follow me on social media here or there. On my next episode, I have something really exciting to show you guys. I stumbled across quite a barn find. In the meantime, subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for the next episode.